Mama, prestala. The world is changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. Much that once was is lost. For none now live who remember it. Welcome everybody to Lego Lord of the Rings. A beautiful adventure game which is exactly what it says on the tin. It is a Lego-fied game which is based on the Peter Jackson adaptation of the Lord of the, Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's a currently fun game which is also very easy to play. Now I'm just going to show you the game controls here real quick if you're just wondering just the basics of how to play. This is obviously the PlayStation 3 version of the game. So if you have a different version, obviously there might be some slight differences depending. I'm not going to go through those because, well, frankly, I do not know of them. Now one thing we're also going to do... Oh, subtitles are already on. Okay. Because unlike the most of the earlier LEGO adaptation games, this one actually has dialogue and cutscenes from the film. No more silent humor, although they have, there are plenty of instances where they happen to incorporate that by altering some of the cutscenes and whatnot. So we're going to delve right in and start a brand new game. Uh, of course we have to go through story mode first, so if you're looking for all the extras and how to get through free play with various characters and whatnot, that is going to come later. First we need to actually get through the basic part of the game. The game is just going to jump right into the prologue right here. It began with the forging of the Great Rings. Three were given to the elves, immortal, wisest, and fairest of all beings. Seven to the dwarf lords, great miners and craftsmen of the mountain halls. And nine. Nine rings were gifted to the race of men who, above all else, desire power. For within these rings was bound the strength and will to govern each race. But they were all of them deceived, for another ring was made. In the land of Mordor, in the fires of Mount Doom, the Dark Lord Sauron forged in secret a master ring to control all others. One ring to rule them all. But there were some who resisted. A last alliance of men and elves marched against the armies of Mordor, and on the slopes of Mount Doom, they fought for the freedom of Middle-earth. And let's begin! Now first, before we do anything, we're going to collect some studs to fill up our true adventure meter, which is the thing at the top center there. This is the spot we can weed that is smoking over here. It's bad for your health, by the way. We cannot do anything with because we need the ability to dig, which we obviously do not have. Now, every once you get your fill your true adventure meter to 100%, you will get a prize for that, and it is the amount of studs you need is different for each level, which is going to be posted in the video description. Some you may not be able to make in free play, and thus have to wait. Um, sorry, in story mode, and thus have to wait until free play. Now, our first goal is to pass on to the next section of this chapter. We need to kill these guys with the big banner targets on their back, but we will also be attacked by random mooks along the way as well. Now, general rule of thumb in this game, anything that is Lego, destroy it, because you tend to get money out of it. Like this is thing right here. Hack it, slasher, away. Now, thankfully, this game is really easy, and you just basically just button mash to attack, but there's nothing wrong with simplicity, is there? Of course not. Now that we've defeated the five, there's going to be three more that are going to show up here. Now these guys have shields, so obviously I have to mash the attack button when confronting them. 
in order to dis uh, disarm them of that and actually, well, to be perfectly frank, murder them. But hey, we're at war. But, but even so, it's still slightly a button mash for, so they are taken down rather easily. Now, we can actually switch characters, either by hitting, in my case, the triangle key or the left and right. Uh, unfortunately, unlike the earlier LEGO games, or at least the ones I've played, it's uh, not as easy to shuffle through uh, your third and characters and beyond. But what you can do is you can actually hold down that button and you'll have a character wheel so you can manually select which characters you want, which is pretty cool. It does take a little bit of time to get it used to, but that's alright. So now that we've killed those three, we are going to advance to the next segment. And as you can see from the bottom, we need our shiny sword, uh, game, work with me here, there we go, of plot advancement to destroy the Morgul blocks. This is the only sword in the game that can actually do this. And that will bring these moops down so we can actually attack them. But don't forget to pick the studs a lot on along the way. That's important. We're going to need those later. Get out of here. Get back here. Don't attack my comrades. Yeah, this thing is huge, and it is awesome. It is our shiny, glowy sword, and it is cool. Victory was near. Yeah, we're winning! But the power of the ring could not be undone. Alright, now the game actually has various checkpoints along the way, and there's also save statues, so you can quit the chapter in the middle if you need to, but most of them are short enough that you don't really need to do that, so I'm not going to bother. Now, who do I have as a character? Let's switch back. Yes, we actually get to fight Sauron right now. Now, the reason I have this character is obviously, as you can see, his staff is orange and glowing. It is made of the Morgul blocks, and thus this is the only sword that can actually damage it. This little shiny block over the air, which is lego fied we cannot actually destroy yet because we need explosives, which haven't been invented yet. So basically, we want to just hold on and avoid Sauron's attacks, and we're waiting for him to do a specific action in order to damage him. Which is this right here. He's going to get his uh, staff here stuck in the ground, and you want to whack it with your shiny sword. And that will take one hearted damage off him. And you can actually see that we've actually broken it right there. And I was not paying attention. That was me being destroyed by a random mook. And you will lose 2,000 studs every time you die, but depending on where and how you died, you may be able to recoup some of those studs. So just kill the random mooks that are going to attack you and just and uh, watch out for Sauron's various attacks until he gets it stuck again. And we can actually rotate the camera a little bit by using the right analog sticks. Uh, most of the time you don't need to do it in story mode. Uh, it's only really useful in the world map, but if you get like a bad angle, like if, I'm, uh, if he's facing the back of the screen right here, and you might not be able to see what you're doing fully. It can be useful in situations such as those. Why are you only attacking me three at a time? There we go. Yeah, it gets kind of boring having a whale just whale around in circles for a little bit, but... Hey, it's the Darker Lord Sauron. He's not going to be easy to defeat. Yep, bad angle, bad angle. Oh, that's not a random mook anymore because he's dead! Come at me, bro! Come here! Whoops! Walked in right at it. Yeah, if you before made like, kind of, sort of like a jump attack with this, um... I don't know if you saw it when I actually did it. It actually makes sparks appear on the ground, because that is how awesome this thing is. Oh, it was 
was in this moment that Isildur, son of the king, took up his father's sword. of Middle-earth was defeated. The ring passed to Isildur, who had this one chance to destroy evil forever. Isildur, hurry! Follow me! I love how Sauron just explodes like that. That is awesome. So now we have lost Isildur's father, because, well, he's kind of dead and all. But we still have our shiny sword. Though broken, it still does work. And I love how in the artwork here, they actually still kept it broken. So now, we actually get to free roam just a little bit over here. Now we have another save stone and checkpoint here. This crack on the wall we cannot deal with until free play. But we can destroy this uh, volcano-y sort of thing. And we have another digging spot which we cannot do anything with. So now we're off to climb Mount Doom to destroy the ring forever. Now these little bars we can actually uh, shimmy across, but I actually find it um, easier to just jump left and right on them because um, it does take quite a while to, to move as you can see, but you can jump across them which I find so much faster. So if you're having trouble with those, just keep jumping across. We're acrobats. Now, obviously, we need our shiny sword to break through the marble blocks here, so... Don't worry, we'll have a use for Elrond a bit later in this chapter coming up. It's alright. So make sure you don't, don't fall in the lava, because obviously it is deadly and you will die. And here we're gonna have... we have another block with a crack in it. But we want to avoid the deadly geysers of fire, because, well, fire hurts. That target we cannot do anything with either. So we need to destroy this block. Don't worry about the Sauron statue here. That is part of the mini kits, which we cannot collect 10 of yet. We actually get a special prize for collecting all 10 of. And actually, you can sort of see one in the cave right there, which went well, out the cave, the alcove. Um, I'm not going to bother collecting any until free play, just so everybody who is looking for them can see where all 10 are in an individual chapter. Most of them you cannot collect until free pay anyway, so in story mode I'm going to avoid every single one unless it is um, pretty much impossible to avoid. Now this dark area we cannot advance into without a special item, which we do not have yet either, which we will be getting later, obviously. Now let's destroy this so we can climb up and studs will suddenly spawn from it. That's handy. Now this part... Uh, anything with these lovely little uh, leaf patterns, you can use an elf to jump higher. It's actually a mini kit behind these Morgul blocks. This is the only one we can change in story mode now, but for reasons I just said, we're going to skip it. Anything on the checkerboard is actually movable. Although sometimes you will need to actually complete um, the checkerboard, so we can push that off the edge so Isildur can actually jump across. And let's destroy some more blocks. You're not doing a very good job of impeding my path here, sirs, but that is A-OK. -okay. We're the heroes. We're going to save the day. So we have another acrobat bar. That's what I'm just going to call them, and more things we need to explode. And more random mooks we need to kill. Now in this area, we actually need to kill all the random mooks. Uh, well, I shouldn't be calling them random because obviously they're scripted and set. To actually open the door to advance. So we just need to be patient and let them come out. And destroy some Lego blocks along the way. Yeah, see, they're coming from the top. This guy's got a shield. But that is no match for our broken sword. So now we've defeated all of them. Our path is open. Alright. Continuing on. Now here is where we can actually obtain our first trophy in the game. And as you can see, we just hit our true adventurer meter. Hooray! 
Now, some versions of the game, PS3 and uh, Xbox 360 being one of them, actually have achievements for doing certain things in the game. We can actually get one right now. By committing suicide. That's right, we're going to destroy that ring right now. Yep. Too bad it didn't work because we have to advance the plot. Cast it into the fire! Destroy it! But the hearts of men are easily corrupted, and the Ring of Power has a will of its own. It betrayed Isildur to his death. And some things that should not have been forgotten were lost. For two and a half thousand years, the ring passed out of all knowledge. Until... The ring came to the creature Gollum, who took it deep into the tunnels of the Misty Mountains. For 500 years, it poisoned his mind. But something happened then the ring did not intend. It was picked up by the most unlikely creature imaginable. What's this? A hobbit, Bilbo Baggins of the Shire. The ring. And that's finished, and hopefully you guys saw the achievement pop in the corner when the uh, when the cutscene started. It actually took a second to go through, but yes, we get that first trophy for uh, jumping off the summit of Mountain Dune from the sides of the seal door, because obviously if that happened, there would be no plot. Now as you can see, we just got another achievement there. We actually get that one for completing story mode. Now for reaching our true adventurer... We are going to get a mithril brick for that as soon as our stud counter for our total currency finishes climbing down. After this chapter, you can actually press the X button, well, in my case, to make that go faster. So we get a mithril brick for completing the level and another for getting true adventure status in the level. We will actually need those to forge items later. Uh, just because this is the first time we've seen it, uh, on the bottom there, the left is the number of mini kits. Our the next one is obviously the number of mithril bricks we have. Our true adventurer status, uh, the one with the little envelope with the X underneath there, is actually a blacksmith bl blueprint. There is one of them in every level and some in the overworld. And we have three random treasures we can find, which, I, like I said before, we are skipping at all possible until we actually get the free play later on. to go through with your plan, then? Yes, yes, it's all in hand. All the arrangements are made. I'm old, Gandalf. I need a holiday. You will keep an eye on Frodo, won't you? Two eyes. As often as I can spare them. I'm leaving everything to him. What about this ring of yours? Is that staying, too? <laughs> You're right, Gandalf. The ring must go to Frodo. Bilbo. Hmm? The ring is still in your pocket. Oh, yes. Goodbye, Gandalf. Goodbye, dear Bilbo. The road goes ever and on. Till our next meeting. Bilbo! Gandalf? He's gone, hasn't he? He's gone to stay with the elves. One ring, two 
rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, find them. This is the one ring forged by the Dark Lord Sauron. Sauron needs only this ring to cover all the lands of a second darkness. Frodo, you must never find it. Get down. Confound it all, Samwise Ganji! Have you been eavesdropping? I have a drop of no eaves, sir, honest. Oh. <laughs> What must I do? Wait for the village of Bree. I'll be waiting for you at the Inn of the Prancing Pony. <laughs> I must see the head of my order. You'll know what to do. <laughs> Keep it secret. Keep it safe. You can see some of the uh, the humor there, where instead of finding by finding the script on the One Ring to confirm that yes, it is indeed the One Ring, I love how Frodo drops it in his coffee instead. Well, it may not be coffee, but you all know what I mean. Now here's a better example of the free rotating camera here. Now this game actually has no central hub. The world is actually open. Um, obviously, uh, when the plot demands it, certain areas will be closed off, and we must walk from one place to another for the time being. But yes, we can actually explore the village and everything. Now, the game has these little transparent studs, these light blue ones, that actually will guide you where to go. And eventually, you will be able to um, choose your destination, so you can't really get lost. Uh, the game will always have those guide studs uh, telling you where you need to go. Like, for example, if I start walking this way instead... If I turn around here, you can see now I have uh, guide studs have appeared here. So they will follow you. So even if you get off course, if you turn around, um, eventually, you know, they will lead you back right on track. So it's not like it's a, you collect them and it's like, oh no, and then turn around and like, oh no, I got lost. Nope, they'll start spawning behind you. There we go. See, that's a good example of them spawning right behind me. So we're actually going to explore the village here next and head off to the next area next time. As always, if you wish to destroy anything Lego, we can just punch it to death and get studs, which is pretty darn cool. So hopefully you guys all in enjoyed the first chapter. We will be continuing, obviously, the game next time, and we will explore the Shire here. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.